to look fantastic. Live shot from Centennial Square. I'd like it if we had the zipper there. Mm -hmm. A zipper would be fun. That would be great. Nothing says Christmas like the zipper. I know. <laughs> sports from the yeah. zipper. Uh, speaking of sports, uh, wow, this is, I guess we shouldn't be surprised at this point, huh? No, this isn't very good, Hudson. Yeah. But uh, if the return of the NHL was tops of your Christmas list. I'm afraid Santa is not going to be delivering. Another slate of games has been wiped from the schedule due to the ongoing lockout. All games through December 14th have now been canceled. So feel free to re-gift those tickets you have for the All-Star Game in Columbus as well. The NHL has canceled All-Star Weekend and another 96 games. That brings the total number of games lost to 422. That's more than 34% of the season. Best case scenario now is a shortened schedule of approximately 60 games. That is, if the NHL and the Players Association can agree on a new collective bargaining agreement, don't hold your breath. That's not likely to happen in the foreseeable future. The two sides haven't met since Wednesday and have no plans to do so. Guess that leaves even more time to check out the stars of tomorrow. Joe Hicketts and the Royals have five more home games before breaking for Christmas, including a doubleheader against the Prince George Cougars. Tonight will mark the first meeting of the season between these division rivals, and they're going to get to know each other quite well over the next week. Four of the Royals' next five games are against PG. When you have the back-to-back -back games, and, and if you win the first night, you know that you're going to see the same team, and they're going to be better, and they're going to make adjustments the second night. So you really have to make sure that your team is on. This is this is a great challenge for our hockey team, and uh, you know it's a team that that is uh, trailing us in the uh, standings, but they're playing extremely well and they play extremely hard, and, and uh, you know it is going to be a challenge for us, and, and we better make sure that uh, we're up for it. 16-year-old defenseman Ryan Gagnon is pretty much up for anything Coach Lowry asks of him, including changing positions. For the past few weeks, Gagnon has been playing on a line with Mitch Deacon and Taylor Crunk. He's been creating a lot of energy as a forward. I'm pretty much just an energy guy. Just try to get pucks deep and work hard. Crash around a little bit too? Yeah, bump a few bodies. I know it's new for him and he's a young guy, but uh, with with the uh, numbers that we had on the back end for a while, there wasn't a lot of playing time, and, and we just want to make sure that uh, he gets his confidence and, and gets into some game action. Credit to him, you know, it's sometimes it's tough for a D moving up, but he understands the game, and and he's a simple player, but he's been real good uh, and real physical for us. Well, a battle of the top two teams in the Vancouver Island Junior Hockey League. The Victoria Cougars hosting the Saanich Braves at Archie Browning Sports Centre. Pick things up in the second period. Cougars up one nothing with the man advantage, but puck misplayed by Graham Zagrodny. Sam Johnson says thank you very much. Skates in and he makes the deposit. Nice goal there. Cougars try to get that one back, but Ben Kinshella is turned aside by Tanner McGaw. The next goal is going to win the game, and it's going to come on the power play. Check it out. This nifty puck movement. And Ty Jones, that young man is averaging 2.4 points per game. He'd have the empty, empty netter as the Braves become the first team to beat the Cougars in regulation. Rematch goes tonight at Perks Arena. Puck drops at 6.30. Well, Vegas is giving the Calgary Stampeders a slight edge over the Toronto Argonauts at the 100th Grey Cup. Stamps are listed as two-point favorites with quarterback Kevin Glenn, the popular pick to take Grey Cup MVP honours. Kickoff is 3 p.m. on Sunday on our sister station, TSN. Well, semifinals for BC High School football take place at UBC tomorrow. Three Island teams making the trip across the water for battle. This team is waiting for the Mount Doug Rams to arrive. They are the W.J. Mowat Hawks, the Rams' biggest rivals, and they are very good. The Hawks are powered on the ground by grade 11 running back Malik Irons, a.k.a. the Iron Man. Now, he averaged 300 yards per game in the regular season. That was his average, and he ran for a B.C. record 491 yards and five touchdowns and a victory over the Rams this October. Don't think they have forgotten that, and if we're keeping score, the Rams did beat the Hawks when it mattered most in last year's B.C. championship game. Saturday's rubber match could really go either way. In every game that we've played over the last two years, it has literally come down to the last minute of play. It's been decided by less than a touchdown. So we have the capabilities. We're confident that we can win the football game, but we have to put in a tremendous effort. And the number one priority, we have to win this along the line of scrimmage. And we have to contain. Yo, we finished our stunch. First game, we all knew too well. He's a fantastic running back and obviously set some pretty big records against 
against us in our earlier contest. He's, he's got the ability to, uh, to outrun anybody and, and uh, take it the distance from anywhere on the field. He's also got extremely good power in short yardage situations. He's an outstanding receiver and we want to use him as a receiver. So he's got the full package and we're hoping that he can uh, do what he's done all year. With a 1-4 and four record, it hasn't exactly been an ideal start to the season for the Camosun College Chargers women's basketball team. They will be in tough tonight against their island rivals from VIU. It's game one of a three-game homestand with intentions of three wins. The squad will call upon their starting five to do most of that legwork. Captain Ella Goldschmidt has played big minutes this year and thinks the time has come to turn the corner. We've seen uh, you know, Douglas beat VIU by a lot, and uh, so... Our league this year, it looks like anybody can win on any given day, so we just have to go out there and give it our best, and I think we have a good chance. Uh, we've already lost them. They're veteran team, you know, they've got size, athletic ability. We're going to have to play well to beat them, so it'll come down to who makes fewer mistakes, and hopefully we can get better. Tip-off at Pisces tonight is at 6 p.m. for the women. The men follow afterwards at 8 p.m. Sometimes it's tough at Camosun because people mm. usually only stay there two years. So you try to build a winning tradition, but you graduate kids on as well. So Your pick for Sunday? Are you saying? Nah. I'm going to say Stamps. Yeah. How about you? Go Stamps Go. I'm not going to say Go Stamps Go. I'm just going to say they're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got an Argonauts fan behind the camera who's going thumbs down to That's that. That's right. Steve. All right, my thank you. You're welcome.